All right, guys, today we're talking about another PPS. PPS. You another PP. It's another PPS. Yeah, this is PPS. That's not really related fennel. to PSU or PPSU. One of the most chemically resistant polymers on the face That's of the planet. That's the big deal about this thing. It's resistant to every solvent known to man under 200 degrees Celsius. That's 400 and something degrees Fahrenheit. 24. That's, that's twice the boiling temperature. That's crazy. No. PPS is a partially crystalline, high temperature performance polymer. This stuff's been around since the 40s. What? That's old. Why? What was it used for in the 40s? Probably some stuff in World War II. I mean, you got, you know, stuff like electrical insulators. Whatever. Uh, and clips. Yes, it's like gasket material. Gasket material. Whatever a, a filter fabric for a coal boiler is. I was reading about it. I was like, what? Someone in, in the comments tell us what that is. Or paper making felt. Sounds very quaint. Paper making Fun. felt? Yeah. Paper making felt. All you paper makers out there, if you know what that's talking about, leave it in the comments below. Yeah, explain to us what that is. Phillips Petroleum developed a commercial process for polymerizing PPS and was the first to succeed at establishing manufacturing operation in 1973. That early version of PPS had a relatively low molecular weight and applications were developed for its use in specialty coatings. Oh. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, by increasing the molecular weight by a thermal cross-linking reaction with the presence of oxygen, both processing and mechanical properties were improved. Uh, it was also discovered that PPS would be suitable for injection molding and exhibit excellent heat and chemical resistance. As a result, demand for the nesting polymer continued to grow for, uh, for more advanced engineering component applications. But you probably already knew that. You probably already knew that, yeah. Duh. Yeah, duh. The coolest thing about this thing you need to know is that you can probably print this stuff even if you maybe modify your Marlin. You might be able to print this with a standard printer because you can do it as low as 315. It is the material that crosses the boundary and we consider officially high temp, but it is 15 degrees away from being low temp. We don't get too many requests for this. Usually when we see it, we'll see um, a requirement for it. A lot of the times the, the clients are used to CNC or injection molding. And they've been using this material for years and they're like, PPS, because it's resistant to everything we need. It has everything we need. It does everything we need. We can't get into anything else because the client just won't budge. So we've seen some very interesting things from some very large, well-known aerospace companies. I believe it was being used as like uh, framing inside of some sort of thing uh, to hold circuit boards and different things like that uh, and like wiring channels but it was really structurally sound it was just very very cool part uh, we've also gotten some small parts that were uh, for medical devices uh, so little gears and levers and stuff like that that would make a lot of sense going into a you know harsh environment sometimes sterilization happens in chemicals instead of just you know, heat or steam or boiling water or radiation. We don't see it a lot in this industry. There's definitely a use case for it. If you need chemical resistance, this is your stuff. The thing that makes this particular thermoplastic interesting is if you push your printer and modify some settings that you shouldn't, because you don't want to start a fire, but it is just hitting that boundary layer into um, high temp. How much is it though? Is it just, is it, baby high temp it's, price or is it like normal high temp? Uh, no, it's cheaper than Ultim. It's a little more expensive than PSU and PPSU, but it's cheaper than Ultim and Peak and just about everything else. It's got a melting temperature of 285 Celsius, uh, whereas the TG, the glass transition, is only 85 Celsius. Yeah. And that puts the uh, heat deflection temperature around 220 Celsius, uh, but you can melt it at around 285. You won't extrude it very easily at that point. You need to be up to the what, 320, 330 mm -hmm. uh, range thing. You do want a heated chamber. Uh, you do want, I mean, obviously the best machine you can afford. Yeah, we get uh, ours from um, 3DX Tech, and there's- Weird looking. Is, is blue. There's different colors available. Feels almost waxy. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so here we have a PPS Benchy. Gray, I guess. Yeah, it's a gray. Battleship gray. Bluish gray. Battleship gray, your battleship Benchy. I know it smells really weird too, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, when we were printing those parts, the printer stunk to high heaven. I think you have to get it hot. Yeah, probably gotta get it hot. Oh, drop it. That'll be one of the tests for all the benches. Like, number one. Marjorie. How satisfying is the noise? How satisfying is the noise? 
That's pretty satisfying. It's like a seven. It's a hard material. I don't like the way it prints very very much, to be honest with you. I think maybe it's the difference between the TG and the actual printing temperature. The flow is weird. Yeah. The, it's gonna take some tuning. Right, you really gotta dial it in. I remember we went at it with normal settings and um, we we're doing those little parts. First time Dan was doing those little parts and it just was not behaving as that, we expected. Uh, we ended up really, I believe we used some cooling fan uh, and it was, just different flow rates and things. and It's one of those things where kind of no matter what setting you have, you're still gonna see your retractions in the print. Very cool stuff. If you need extreme chemical resistance or if you wanna try printing a high temp polymer on your lower temp printer, PPS. Mm, make sure you know what you're doing. Great way to go. Definitely, definitely be prepared. We do we not like advocate modifying your printers unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and always, you know, even if you got, if you just bought a $50,000 printer, you're still gonna have to learn the software. So give yourself that time, fail hard, fail fast, print something, and then figure out how to fix it and just get on that path, and it's gonna be awesome. If you have any other questions, leave those in the comments too. We're here to help, we love hearing their stories. I wanna do a big vase out of this. Oh. Like make a point six can layer height. Make a trash can and throw away hydrochloric acid. Wait, no, that's like the one Wait, we, thing it doesn't resist, right? We actually could make like a chemical disposal bin or something where it's like, what do I do with this acetone? I'll just pour it in here for now yeah. instead of putting it down there. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, we'll put this stuff in some chemicals. Probably be good for under the hood parts, you know, if you need to replace your melting point flame container room. in your car. I don't know. Uh, good stuff. Anyway, if you want to know more, hit, up, hit us up. We're here to help. Thanks for watching the video. See you on the next one. Have a positive rest of your day.